Hello and welcome back to Daily Doodles. I'm Ken Coleman and this is part two of a image that I photographed from the red line as I was crossing over the Charles River the other day, earlier this week before we got hit with the snow. Okay, so this is the preliminary. This is what I had done during part one. A lot of the sky, none of the bridge, the railing and the details here. As I was looking forward and getting ready for the segment, I was thinking about what I was going to do, how I was going to warm this up, make it look less, I know this is dusk, but less less dusky lightening up this and if I first if I switch over from the pen from the eraser to the pencil and increase the size of the tip yeah. Trying to brighten up the sky. It was, I'd like to say, four ish when I was on the train. So the sun was just about to go down over the horizon. My voice is feeling a bit better since yesterday. Still trying to get something that is warm, something that is a little bit dark here, while also illuminating, because this isn't quite sunset yet. So how has your week been, all of my viewers? I hope that for all of you seeing it, th for all of you seeing this video this weekend, I hope that the weather has treated you well. Those of you in the Northeast, and I hope you've been having a great week nonetheless. Here in Boston in 2018, this hasn't been the worst snowstorm that I can remember, but it was brutal for a day and a half. We got, for about a day, we got a lot of snow, and it was the first time that I had ever heard, I think it's called snow thunder or thunder snow, where thunder is legitimately created, but during this cold weather, when the snow is coming down on us. I hadn't heard it when I was in Syracuse in the midst of the snow belt. And I had never heard it in New England before. I had only heard the really strong winds. There's a first time for everything. So I'm going to hit this with a little bit of a brown. Not go at it with too much darkness. Like I said, I'm trying to warm this up, but without making it look like dawn or a brighter time in the day. 
than it actually is. So there's some clouds. Can go back in there with some shadow. I'm going to bring this over to the cyan. It's where not that bright. That blue. Let's see, that little crossroads, where the cyan, and the white, and the gray meet. Bring that over. There's a cloud going this way. Clouds that start out strong and lighten up as they arc outward. If any of you know the name of these types of clouds, this is what the photo looks like for better understanding. Please let me know in the comments down below. This is something that I like about working on a landscape on a cloudy day, from a cloudy day. The clouds give just so much character to the sky. It's more exciting. It's part of why I find it so appealing to take my reference photos towards the end of the day or at the beginning when this wealth of full spectrum of color is all shining from either one horizon or the other. East or west to one side or that. It is such a cool thing to behold. That arcs there, and it's going to be softer than this big ripple.
So the lights I am here. that corner I describe my style as impressionist uh, this is considered painting drawing or sketching when I'm fixing Picking different colors digitally. I consider it Impressionism nonetheless. Hand picking the colors and it is, I look analytically at how the light is being reflected. It's a cool scientific side that I find in this work. We're understanding the science of your subject as well as the science of your medium. Whether that is with pastels or watercolors, acrylic, when I'm working with pumpkins, science of the subject plus science of the medium and a little bit of individual creative intuition it gives the piece that heart. darker darker still the sun is going down the opposite side would be darker missing that solar presence A little bit cooler. These clouds can create so many fun designs. And 
the highlights, the shadows. It's fascinating. The light reflects off of different particles in a variety of ways. I'm still getting the hang of thinking out loud when I'm shooting these videos. up the window I was shooting this photo from it wasn't the cleanest of windows so that also is some interesting instructions that I can work into this photo, into this painting. Since it was a little messy, that just adds to the texture here. you might be able to hear over the mic. I'm going to be having lunch soon. <laughs>
tricky thing using the Wacom, Wacom, Wacom stylus is the you can never be too sure when you're giving so little pressure that the stylus doesn't recognize on the tablet. can be tricky. That's about it for the sky and mostly for the water. I'm going to get up for a moment, but I'll be back in a flash. I am back and time to get back to work. So the skyline as we get closer to the horizon, closer to the sun, it gets warmer. And we're right at that median right in the middle point, the buildings almost disappear. So I'm going to gradually warm them up. Right to that point. Yeah. Okay, so next touch up on here, there, 
here. And here. Noticing that in how the sun reflects off the river, there isn't always as much of a gradient. So just working that in. Now I'm going to start on a second layer for the bridge and everything on it. And that way, when I'm doing all this railing, I can uh, work subtractively and take out little pieces. So to contrast off of all the warm tones from the sun and the reflection, I'm going to start out with a very cold, a little bit blue, dark gray, darker than this. I think that I'll have to make it even darker. Darken that up further. When the very background is so dark, it seems that everything becomes light and when compared relatively. Purple. Darken that area. I have a feeling that this video will be more than a half hour. But my goal is to get this done. It was originally supposed to be a two-parter, so so shall it be. That might be a little too dark. <sighs> this bridge has been undergoing a lot of construction over the past years. Often the red line doesn't run on the weekends since they're still doing a lot of rail work. And I remember that for years these roadways just weren't open. 
everything was being uh, refurbished. Unfortunately, there's still some graffiti on the side. lot of texture and direction to this bridge. to begin the railing. Starts about halfway up, just a little short of halfway. Beginning to have this little post. Lining up the tone. here. There's another one. Next one gets a little browner. And it's right below here. Not that one either. No.
next one is going to be right here. Going further off, the intervals between the posts are shorter. finer details. Fortunately, there's a pattern here. Now, one thing that I have to be mindful of, aside from the spacing, is that eventually I'm going to need a finer tip for this pencil tool. So you just repeat the pattern. Unfortunately, if there is a mistake, go in there with the eraser. Many of the paints that I work with, they are relatively forgiving, more so than watercolors or ink, though I work with those as well. But working digitally give some of the most freedom. All the more colors within your reach, you can use multiple layers. The price, however, is that there is a loss when you can't tactically feel the paints. There is a sensual there is a sensual connection that you can pick up when you're painting with a brush and a palette. When you're gauging with your intuition how long it will take different amounts of paint to dry. How uh, that works to your benefit or to your detriment. Back when I was in art school. I would sometimes paint barefoot just so that I'd be taking in all that sensual all that sensual stimulation. It was a brushed concrete floor and 
my professor was always very cautious of it. Jerome Witkin, if you're listening. But I was always well prepared. I made sure that my little work area was swept beforehand. I would sweep it. Safe area and you could feel the coldness, the briskness rising up from your feet and channeling through your hand as you're manipulating the medium and the canvas and the primer to interpret your creative vision. In some ways I'm doing it here. But you feel different things when you're sitting in front of a computer instead of standing at an easel. When you're on a carpet instead of brushed concrete. different mediums, they both have their pros and cons. And there are mornings that I miss those days. So the further over that we get, the more we're inclined to make the railing a little bit brown, moving its way over to orange. Maybe not the Maybe just a little bit of the sidewalk on the edge of this lane of traffic, but not so much that it stands out from the bluish grays. I want it to be noticeable, but not taking away from its cohesion in the terms of visual aesthetic. thinner the rails are, more a chance that they have some part of the visible surface reflecting the sunlight. And that may be more than they are at that point on the photo reference. But there's one of the many examples where creative interpretation, creative, it's a term creative liberty, plays a role. That is looking great.
going to darken this up. Right now, my YouTube following is just in its developmental stages. Hours after Daily Doodles 13, part one of this double feature was uploaded. Someone gave it a thumbs up and thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that, and for all of you watching these videos, you can feel free to likewise put the thumbs up, leave some comments below if you want to see some other types of landscapes or views around New England. Whenever I travel, I try taking photos of those places too so that I can apply them to my art. All right. And the last part, or second to last part, is a car. We're going to do that on another layer. So in the shadows, you can't see too much of the car. On this bridge, there is a lot of rush hour. And this was before rush hour it kicked in for the night. So at different points, these cars were whizzing past my train. There is a subway stop right at the end of this bridge. And as we were going this direction, there were also cars that didn't have to stop at that subway platform. Let's see. Just going to try at least mapping out the car. Before I allow these shadows to just meld into the rest of the bridge. While displaying enough to highlight the car. Further. It's like chiseling out of marble, trying to 
bring this form out of the darkness. Too much, don't want too little. Keep that on my palette, so to speak. And try using this tone diplomatically to create some shadow. It goes well with what I already did about the, the bridge. Finding common ground between this brown and warmer grays. Warm that up and a little bit more. Might not look entirely perfect, but it's getting close. Uh, through the windshield of this car, it is getting grayer. We're looking at some solid through there, but it's indistinguishable. There's light bouncing around the interior of that car. Past the glass. before it reaches that other side of the, a passenger side window. Bring it up a little bit more. Gradually bring the light. Could even be the groundwork for the highlights on top of the body of the car.
Now I have the silhouette and the contour of the hood. I might go into that space darkening it a little bit, but for now, going to use highlight to identify the edges. It can be a little cartoony. There to the headlight. Dimensions might be a little bit off on this car, but you know, I think it's meant to look fast. Faster than my train car was going across the bridge. And the grill. Below the grill, sides, Due to the time of night, the headlights were on in the blinker, the blinker. Bring that up and that will shadow will meld with the rest. Very good. Just show the not that strong. Make that car plainly visible. And then we're gradually going to work up those headlights. Be mindful that from this perspective, the one on the far side won't be as visible. We'll be seeing more of the blinker, the faint way. The 
in there. And a little bit cloudy. Because that is still the far side of the light that we're looking at. Instead of where the bulb would be on the opposite. Now we start working towards the blinker. Closer. Bring it on in. It's going to gradually build its way up. We can add these orangey tones on here. As the sunset is reflecting off of the top of this car. are even getting some glare both from the car and the window. Uh -huh. Keep walking our way. Or to that orange. Closer. And just as we make it to that threshold, we sober it up. We have some darker tones. Because this isn't fully illuminated and we're looking at it through not only the darkness of the light, the surroundings, the environment, but also the darkness of my slightly dirty window. Going to add a little bit of purple there. And here, it's going to add a little bit. 
that out smidgen. On the colors available in Photoshop, they're displayed in a way that goes from blue to magenta to red, and then looping all the way back up. Not looping, but have to go right back to the bottom to work your way up to yellow. So I'm going to see how far just going up I can get. To make this car gracefully built into the background. Perhaps that does mean taking some of the blue out, swapping in some warmth. color a bit. I'm going to use that on the far skyline. I would identify more of these colors by the hexadecimal codes and official names, but often here I'm working on a whim and it would take way too much time. I would be here for the next decade working on this piece. Some of you have maybe seen my dog and my what's in my lunchbox cooking videos. I see someone out front and it's barking right now.
stepping back a little bit away. Got a foot. And I like how this is coming. Last step is a final layer. First, I am going to lower the opacity. and begin adding in effects of how light reflecting off my window would affect my view. Because that too was adding personality to my perception of this scene. Seeing all the more red. There's one more red here. Not so much that it would look on fire, but that there would be some glow. through the course of the day and any debris that's dusting up the windows. I imagine that these collect a lot over the course of the workday. Part of the beauty of the light is the imperfection that it's additionally reflecting off the window. And making do the opportunities that you're given.
push that on to the sun. For the car hood, just going to try adding sort of a dry grayish lavender. as well it is picking up some of the light reflecting it isn't as much a direct hit on the sun all right and now we begin this part which is Going to try lightly imagining the subtleties what the, the rubber lining of this window looks like. So that it isn't one just flat, dark framework. And how I crop this image. darker and contrast there And there we go. My interpretation, what I was seeing right here, I 
think that I can get a little bit more red. So a little bit. Reddish brown. That fades off into the darkness. Some of the color from there. Bridge the great bridge the gap. There we are. All right. One last layer for my signature. So I am Ken Coleman. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the part one, please give the thumbs up down below. I'd love to hear any of your comments and feedback in the comments section. There is the option to subscribe to this channel, to follow What's in my lunchbox? Excuse me while I gush. My exploration into SketchUp. All that fun stuff. So the subscription will help you to follow those videos. There is even a little bell thing that alerts you when a new video is up. So have a good weekend. Have a good day. Have a good night. Any point in the day that you're watching this video. Thank you very much. This is Ken Coleman. This is Ken Coleman and have a good one.